Gokul, we, as we were talking about failures, startups within startups or within large enterprises, um, ultimately we decided that, discussed that it all boils down to people behind it. Now, we've seen a vast change in the valley right now in terms of the skill sets that engineers have or people who are actually behind these ideas. What have you observed in terms of the, the changes that engineers and product managers and UI designers, UX designers, um, over, the, over the course of the last five to 10 years, uh, be it within a startup or when they make a transition from a startup to a large enterprise, what are some of the characteristics of these people behind these ideas that we are talking about? I think one of the interesting things that you see with engineers is they, they just dislike bureaucracy and not just bureaucracy around, around them, but even the bureaucracy that comes with checking in code and seeing it deployed to production. In fact, I heard it once said that the happiest engineers are one engineer's happiness is directly correlated to the, or inversely correlated to the amount of time it takes them from the time they check in code, which is a finished writing code, to the time it actually push it to production. So the more barriers you put into place to getting them to push their code to production, the less happy they are. And so as the company grows, naturally, when you're a startup, when you're a two-person company, engineers will be checking in code constantly and pushing it to production almost real time. But as the company grows, then there are more people who have to review the code. There might be cycles that you have to wait for the code to be deployed, and that wears on engineers, creates on engineers. So naturally, the engineering, the best engineers are those who are able to balance the speed with, with figuring out how to fit into the process of a large company and push the boundaries. And we see that all the time. And some companies have a, a really excelled at allowing, even though they are, they've scaled and become extremely large companies, they've allowed the freedom um, to this engineering group, whether it's a software development team or the backend engineers or the UX designers, to allow these changes to propagate 50 times a day onto their production site. Case in point, Amazon. Case in point, Facebook, Netflix. Uh, these companies have allowed this culture of a two-person startup to continue right. even when they are a 2,000 people company. And all of these companies have good, what we call staging environments. So they essentially, when you have good staging environments, you can quickly push, push your code and then you can have the staging environment, say bear 1% of the traffic going to it. So you can very quickly see with 1% of traffic how it's doing. And then if it, if it passes the checks, you can actually then push it to full production. But you need, that's a great thing also with being an engineer today where earlier the engineers had to do you write a piece of code, there was no cloud infrastructure there. So you had to do a lot of work to actually get your code onto production. You had to do a ton of scripts and so on. Now, increasingly things are being taken away and third parties are coming that are doing all of these things from obviously there's cloud, there's Docker, there's all of these containers. There's so many things that make your life easier as an engineer to ship code to once you write the code. But at the root of it, engineering is all about problem solving. So. The, the job of an engineer is getting even more abstracted mm -hmm. to becoming a problem solver at the highest level because all the other things that are on execution of that are being taken away by third parties that are specialists. So the best engineers still are going to be the people who can take a complex problem and solve it algorithmically. So Gokul, over the period of the last, let's say, 15 years, we talk about consumerization of IT. We talk about how enterprises are looking at solving uh, problems by taking lessons learned from consumer startups and vice versa. There have been successes on both. Um, what have you observed in the change of attitude uh, that the engineering team members have had to adopt over the course of these five years, um, be it whether a UI developer or a back-end engineer? I think the most important thing is to have a growth mindset. What that means is you've got to not worry about the programming language used. Mm. You've got to understand that change is a constant. And you just have to be comfortable that whenever a change comes, you have the right mindset to just embrace change because change is always going to come in terms of the technology you're using, in terms of the, the style of people you're working with, all of those things. So you need to have a growth mindset and be ready to just change how you work. I think I would say that change really has come in two dimensions over the last 10 years. One, on the personal side, people need to figure out how to work in distributed teams. Mm -hmm. Increasing number of teams are distributed. The engineering teams might be divided into three or four different geographies time zones, how do you check code, how do you review other people's code without necessarily being able to communicate with them or see, be, be right across the table from each other. So that's one. Effective engineering teams increasingly know how to work in distributed environments. The second one is machine learning. Mm -hmm. Every engineer, I strongly believe over the next 10 years, will become an ML engineer, every strong engineer. So you need to really have a good grasp of ML techniques, of AI, 
of deep learning maybe, but ML will be applicable just like mobile. Mm -hmm. 10 years ago was a, was a novelty, but now we don't even say something is mobile first. It's just part of what you are. And if you're not mobile, if you don't have mobile, you're at a significant, it's not even, it's not a, even a product. So ML, I strongly believe over the next five, 10 years is going to be exactly like that. Where it's something, there are not startups that say they're ML enabled, but 10 years from now, every company, every process will have machine learning, AI, as part of it. So I think every engineer needs to understand the basics of it and needs to figure out how it applies and needs to get up the curve of ML machine learning. Excellent. Gokul, it's always fun to talk to you and there's so much learnings from this process. I really appreciate it. I really want to thank you for coming into our offices and I hope we can actually do this uh, much more frequently. Thank you for having me, Ravi. It would be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.